This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so if you remember last class, what we discussed, we had gone over certain topics, and those topics were what is class, what is object. So we discussed that. What is UML notation? We talked about that. Then what are the members of the class? We said there can be two types of members that class has, which will be fields, or we gave different name to field, properties, data types, sorry, data members. And then we talked about functions, but functions we are categorizing into three separate buckets. Uh, it can be constructor, it can be getters, it can be setters, or it can be other functions. Right now, getters and setters are for every field that we have. If we have any private field, then we can have a getter and setter function for those fields so that we do not expose the fields directly. So this is something to keep in mind right now. Uh, then we talked about class relationships. We understood what is, is a relationship between two classes, what is has a relationship, and what is uses relationships. And to end the class, we did a kind of small case study where we talked about creating a window where we used inheritance. Then we talked about how to create button, how to attach that to window, and what the event handling concepts were. So we briefly touched upon event handling, but today's class, we will go more on event handling. Right. And all that we are doing is towards one common goal that we should be able to see how all this application gets us to that being zero mini paint. So this is the application that we were talking about that will eventually lead to after learning all these concepts. So I'm just compiling and running from the same line being zero mini paint. So this is ampersand is to kind of chain to command. So I want to run this command first, then this command. So it will compile and run at the same time. So let me hit enter here. So keep in mind, this is eventually where we want to reach to in these sessions. And this is the mini paint application that we want to build. <clears throat> so if line is selected, we are able to draw line. If you change the color, we should be able to draw the line in that color. If I change to any other shape, oval, we will be able to draw oval and rectangle. And there is one more feature. It can be filled. Let me change the color to green. And now we are able to draw fill rectangle and fill oval. Right? So eventually, by the end of the series, whatever oops concepts we are covering, you should be able to speak about how you can build this mini paint from scratch, from no code, and how oops concepts are being applied here. And this is giving, going to give more insight to you in like application of these oops concepts to real world. So last class, we just got started with those concepts. We just started understanding certain things. And in order to build mini paint, there are a few more concepts that are required. Okay, so sir is saying there is some disturbance in my voice. Is that being faced by everyone? I can try to fix it. Can other people also confirm? Do you hear any disturbance in my voice? Okay, there is disturbance. Let me see if we can fix it. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so so we were talking about like this is what eventually we want to reach to. And all this series, we will be learning all the concepts that are required for us to know so that we can comfortably build this application and we can comfortably uh, relate it to the OOPS concepts. Right, so let's close this and continue with what we are going to discuss today. So today we will go into OOPS concepts, event handling, and some more concepts. Some more UI concepts in general we will talk about, where I will introduce you to, uh, you guys have a subject in your college, design patterns. Can you respond in the chat window if design patterns was a subject that is being that has been taught to you? Or maybe it is design patterns is part of some other subject. Okay, design patterns was not a subject or not a topic in any of the subject. Okay. Okay, no problem. So we will talk about only one design pattern today. It will be good to know that in just a moment. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so when I cover design pattern, I'll, I'll try to be as slow as possible so that you get the intent. Ultimately, we are not, uh, I'm not going to teach you design patterns, but I want to correlate something so that you know 
that what is design pattern that we are talking about ideally we will be learning the concept for our application right so oops concepts wise if i ask you what are the four oops concepts when you respond in the chat window there are four oops concepts that we need to be aware of and then we will correlate them to the language okay so i hear inheritance encapsulation Uh, polymorphism and one more is what did i leave abstraction right so yeah so these are the four oops concepts we will talk about and we will also correlate it to java so is it fair to assume that all of you have completed a course on java in your college perfect so java is there for everyone right because we will correlate these concepts to java so that we can understand things much better that what these concepts mean at round level so in java if i ask you can you give keywords in java concepts in java which are related to abstraction what are the java keywords or java concepts which are related to abstraction yeah abstract class so there is an abstract keyword this is a keyword abstract class or abstract function right so this is one keyword abstract any other concept that comes under abstraction uh, sirisha this private does not come under abstraction we will talk about that private protected come under encapsulation so they are for hiding part so yeah and but good that you are responding so i will get to know where people have wrong understanding and we can correct that but keep responding so that we have corrections also so yeah somebody said implements keyword we can keep implements here this is related to both inheritance and abstraction right so this is a common one so we will keep it here and abstraction because uh, implements helps us implement an interface okay yeah so implements and abstract keyword is what we are putting here there is one more keyword i am waiting for to come from your side that we will say hey that is related to abstraction so people are saying extends when do we use keyword extends what is the purpose of keyword extends inheritance so, so you have answered yourself so extends is not going to be here so let me put that extends keyword in inheritance part so extends is not the keyword i'm looking for there is one more keyword or one more concept in java which we will say hey this is related to abstraction okay let me write that then this is interface okay so abstraction will be having these concepts right now that we have parked there inheritance will have extends keyword there is another keyword called super which refers to super class yes prasanna that will be the inheritance related thing for encapsulation what are the keywords you will put in encapsulation yep here we will put all the access modifiers we will say private public protected and though there is no additional keyword default which means absence of these on a field yeah so this is so so they are the keyword is protected i assume whatever you have typed this is spelling mistake yeah so these we will say they come under encapsulation although people also say that class should also come under encapsulation because class binds data member and field together but we, for now we will leave that outside of our discussion for polymorphism what are the keywords so mainly polymorphism is about overloading and overriding that is the keyword so there is a keyword in java called not keyword i'll say it's a annotation override so keyword is that but these concepts we will understand in more detail yeah so overloading and overriding are the concepts related to polymorphism so these keywords that we are talking about we will keep correlating to them we will keep coming to them and say okay this is where we have applied inheritance this is where we have applied abstraction so keep these things in mind because we will revisit them we will come back to them when we uh, when we have done some discussion about it 
right so now let's talk about the concept of event handling so when we do event handling main thing is i'll give you a scenario so that we can understand it better so when we click a button we want let me say like we have a ui ui with two text boxes two text boxes first text box is num1 this is first text box another text box is num2 another text box and in that ui there is a button both have these text boxes there is a third thing which is called button and when you click the button in fact i'll also say uh, these are text boxes uh, there is a third box called label on which we will show the answer and fourth is a button and this button i'll call as calculate so what we are discussing is what we are talking about is you will have a ui and that ui is of this nature let me <clears throat> use my whiteboard yeah so if we go to a ui so this is the ui i'm talking about so there is one text box here another text box here and there is a result label here so this is your num1 this is num2 and this is your result or we said what did we call that name that we gave you the answer so i just want to make sure that our ui is in line with what we are saying and let me put an equals here and now on equal side or on this there is a button and what we essentially want to do is we want to do when you click the button ideally the sum of these two numbers should be appearing in the answer so if first two numbers are if this number is 25 and this is 31 can you tell me what do i want when i click on this button what should happen on click of the button yeah 56 should appear in the answer so this defines the problem statement that we are discussing right so their sum should appear now if i go and change this 25 to any other number and again press calc button so what we should see is we should see the answer should get updated so it's kind of add calculator we are building you, you eventually can extend it to the full-fledged calculator but we are building an add calculator so that we can understand the concept of event handling well through this example right so add calculator is what we are building so this is two text so we are building let me call it now add calculator which has two text boxes one label and one button and what we discussed just now is on click of button button sum of two variables should appear in label that is the simple thing that we are talking about now this certainly requires some sort of event handling because on click of this button you want some action to be taken right so that's the ultimate crux of it crux of it now in event handling there are some concepts that we should be aware of that is why we are talking about this application so event handling concepts just see what they are first of all there will be something called as event source so source is the class or the object that gets notified that knows when the event happened this knows when event has happened right so one is source second is basically handler handler is the object who goes and takes an action when event happens action when event happens right so source is clear handler is clear imagine like uh, if you are expecting a friend uh, who will come to your home and you are sitting on terrace of your house which is in a, in a closed room you are sitting and every five minutes you are coming downstairs and you are checking whether the friend has come or not right every five minutes you are doing that so it's kind of you are the handler because you are waiting for your friend to come but source of the event is your any person who is sitting on the ground floor who can see the friend has come or not so rather than you going down and checking again and again you can do one thing you can tell that person who is sitting downstairs whenever my friend comes 
just give me a call just shout and say your friend has come so that way we don't have to keep searching keep looking for the event right because source is the one who will get to know about it and handler is the one who should be notified hey the event has happened now you can do whatever you want to do with that event so this concept of source and handler is clear is it making sense perfect so in our example i want you to tell me what is the source in this example who is the source for the event yeah, who is the source for the event who will get to know the event has occurred yeah calculate button so button whenever somebody clicks the button button would know that somebody has clicked me but button is not the handler button is the source so you can say yes this calc which is a button is the source in our example who will be handler in our example what will be handler who can do the calculation and set the things back <clears throat> answer is not the handler answer is ultimately a field where which handler will go and update it is related to handler certainly but handler will be a function who does the sum label cannot do the sum do you all agree it will be a function so handler will be a function so i can say this will be a function that what will that function do it will do three things first it will ask for num1 from first text box this is what the handler's goal will be it will take number 2 from second text box and then it will do the do the sum of num1 and num2 and after that can you tell me what will be the next step it has taken two numbers from each text box it has added them and now what does it do with that sum yeah what should it do with that sum yep it should display and display is who is the object here responsible for displaying the answer in our example who will display the answer it's answer right so what this function should do this function is interacting with all of them the function should say uh, update the sum in answer which is a label right so this is get this is get this is rather than update i'll say set so now you see we are getting to getter than setter we are doing to some getting to some mathematical calculation so this is what a function would do right yeah but that is we display that in the answer so this is the flow is particularly is pretty clear to us what is it that we are trying to do right so i have talked about two things one is source one is handler and there is third thing somebody who connects source and handler somebody that connects source to handler right so what is that source to handler connection this is somehow we some piece of code which connects our function to the source that's all about event handling and if this concept is something that can stay in our head that we are clear about that there are three things involved in any event handling then the rest of our journey will become much smoother this was the only concept that we required to learn for event handling now all thing that we will see is we will just see the language syntax of making it happen right i also mentioned to you that these concepts are related to a pattern called observer pattern i'll come to that observer pattern gives some name to the source gives some name to the handle so that is all about observer and regarding connection logic how do you connect source and handler it gives some guidance once we understand those three things we'll have much better clarity and we will say okay now we know a design pattern also so is everyone clear with event handling concepts any questions on event handling three things that we have talked about the scenario that we are taking yeah, feel free to raise if you have any questions otherwise we'll move on anyli you have a question or no question okay things are clear okay sure so let's move forward now design pattern says that whenever there is a source which we said this is our source <clears throat> and whenever we say there is a handler to this so handler will be separate which right now in this picture is not there 
so there is a source there is a handler and there is a there is someone who binds them together who connects these two things to together so so that is what the observer pattern comes in so observer pattern says what we will do the person who gets to know about the event who is the source call this thing as observable this is observable class so this class is the one which says hey i'm observable anybody who wants to know from me whenever something happens notify me i'll let you know so in observer pattern terms we will say source is observable any class object which says i can be observed that is observable handler is called observer and this connection code that we do it has some guidelines in that design pattern so that guidelines we will understand now so guidelines are oh, how should observable class be written how should observer class be written those are the guidelines that bind them together they say like if you follow some guidelines your event handling code will become much cleaner right so now let's see in those terms what these things should be and then we will bring it back to the overall class discussion oops discussion will come back to that so observer pattern says the class which is observable so for now i am going to use the source as observable right so it says if you have an observable class what this class should do it should provide a function and that function should be uh, let's say add listener it should grow, provide a function which takes a listener object from us which is or call it it takes an observer object from us obj which we can add to this observable that means we should have an ability to subscribe to observer observable we should be able to say to him hey i want to observe you i want you to call me whenever something happens so this is a function this function allows observers to connect to observable object so this is making sense this is again guideline related to this code which connects these two functions this is the guideline observer pattern is given so we will say that hey we want to listen to you now it is observable person's responsibility to call a function on this object right that means it should also give a guideline to the observer class class observer that this class must have a function this is handle event event arguments so this is the simple guideline it says one function this guy is mandatory to have which is observable and one function is mandatory in the observer that you should have that function in you so let me put this comment over here and this is the function that will be called by that will be called by observer observable when the event occurs and now we have brought in all three pieces together if we follow these guidelines these are the set of guidelines that help us connect things easily source is observable and handler is observer is this making sense this is kind of one way of achieving event handling and this is the guideline that observer pattern gives Hey guys, are we able to correlate things? Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so now in Java, people wanted this thing to be pretty generic. Pretty generic, as in each observer will define its own form of the function. That means each observer should have this function implemented. That in a, it is enforced by an interface. So we say let's define an interface which will have this function and every observer will actually implement this function and make it public this will implement that so 
So what we have done is we have simply moved that function that every observer should implement into an interface. And now we will come to the concept of interface. Only thing we have done is see every observer must implement this. So what we have done, we have moved that function to an interface. And now we have put a guideline that every class that wants to be a handler should implement this interface and the reason we did that is because multiple types of events are there button has a click event then scroll bar has a scroll up scroll down event then uh, you can say a canvas where we draw in paint it will have mouse move event if mouse moves it wants to do something event is not only click event it can be any event so things needed to be generic so first thing is define an interface Second thing is implement the interface and anyone who implements that interface actually becomes an observer and we can put event listener also here. This brings down to a concept that if we say event listener E is equal to new observer, this is doable because what is the relationship between if I ask you two entities now, event listener treat for now that is a class and observer if these two were kind of classes what is the relationship between them out of three categories of relationships that we described last time is a has a or uses what is the relationship between event listener and observer which relationship do you see it is there is a has a or uses has a nilima let's correct that has a relationship comes only when this class observer class has a member of event listener type this will make it a has a relationship we don't have has a relationship because has a relationship means what let's revise that also once again has means has a means one class having object of another class as its data member or field or property we don't have that relationship here there is is a relationship is that typically comes when you implement an interface or when you extend a class that is why i said when you were saying implements i said this is related to both inheritance and abstraction the way it is related to abstraction is because implements is for implementing an interface and implements keyword is like inheritance this inherits the functions of the interface so looking at this this line can i say observer is a event listener please tell me if this line you agree with our observer is an event listener of observable do you agree with that observer is a event listener perfect and we are when we are reading what is observer oh this is an event listener and here we are saying itself observer object is an event listener so this simply tells this is is a relationship not has a relationship right so now we have got three pieces in place uh, how do we go about implementing this so in java built-in classes that are there all those classes button all those classes on action of which we can perform so we can write our own function button and all all these ui elements are can you tell me what they are they are observers they are event listeners or they are observables can you tell me what is button according to you with these three concepts listener observer and observable in which category you will put button observable okay that is great so button is observable button says if somebody clicks me i can tell you right in our scenario that is what we wanted we said somebody clicks you you tell me i will write the function or i will execute the code so this is observable or button and all other ui elements most of the ui elements are observable they provide us ability to observe them that means they all must have some function to add a listener we can subscribe to them right so this is observable for all of them 
interfaces are already existing in java so what i'm trying to correlate to is this is existing in java you don't have to do anything for writing these classes those classes are built in their interfaces interfaces for event are also built in into java so second thing is also existing this is also existing first thing is also existing now third thing is somebody who has to implement that interface and give the function which will do the work which is called handler or observer we are supposed to write these on our own this is something where our coding comes into picture and these three things combined together complete the topic of event handling theoretically at least we we understand <clears throat> right i'll take you back to the last classes example that we did we did that in a short span of time so that we can achieve what we are looking for but now we will understand and correlate all to these terms java c being zero oops ex1 we compile the code now let me say we run the code being zero ex1 we see there is a button right now there are no two text boxes from which we can take the number we can show the number but there is one button at least it helps us see the event handling if i click the button it says button click if i click the button it says button click anytime i click the button it says button click let me close this let me stop this application let's take a look at that code what it is doing so let's try to draw a kind of diagram for our code all the classes that we have all the functions that they have their relationship let's do a uml diagram for them so help me draw the UML diagram of window class. So window is the class. I'm just putting the name right now. This is window class. Does it have any data members? This is the code you are seeing of entire class. Is there any data member, any field that is defined inside the class? Everyone is able to see the class code, right? The class code is in front of you. I'm asking you to focus only on this window class right now. In this window class, each class can have two types of members in it. That is what we talked about last time. Let me go back to a recap. Class can have fields and functions. I can call fields as data members, properties, or anything. Right? Let me go back there. Tell me, in this class, do we have any data members, any fields? I see only one response in the chat window. BT and click me. Is btn click me a field? Can I say this is a member of the class, which is not a function. This is a data member of the class. Do you all agree with this? Yes, so, so yes. Thanks for your response. So we will say, yeah, this is something btn click is a data member. btn click is a data member whose data type is, what is the data type of that? It is a J button type. So there is, I'm running short of space here. So let me use the simple thing btn c and this is j button and j button is built in class in that so only one data member here does it have any functions this window class does it have any functions in it so i go back here there can be functions of various categories see even constructor is a function Functions and fields are the only things part of the class. So there is a function which is constructor, right? So yeah, constructor also we will keep in the category of function. We'll keep our understanding simple. Class has fields and functions. Functions can be of various categories. So yeah, we have one function and that function is our window. This is our function, constructor. So first class diagram is done. Let's go to the next class that we have. So we have, oh, here one more thing I missed. Window class is extending J frame. So what does this line tell us? What is the meaning of this entire line? Class window extends J frame. Inheritance, right? That means there is a built-in class J frame, which we are inheriting from. So J frame is a class. And this notation, this UML diagram notation says you can have a symbol for inheritance also. So this is telling us that we are inheriting from this class. Okay, so this is the symbol of inheritance. So J frame window, two classes we have covered. 
with one piece of code that we were looking at, which is this. So this piece of code is covered in our class diagram. Let's look at the next piece of code, our handler. We have one more class, which is called our handler. So let me draw the diagram for that also. So our handler is this, our handler is this. Now, what are the data members of our handler? Look at this. Do we have any data members in our handler class? No, we don't have, certainly. Do we have any functions in our handler class? Yes, we have one function whose return type is void and that function takes action event. So there is a function that we have here. Data member section, we will leave empty. Action performed is a function. Action performed takes a parameter action event and return type is void. Okay, pardon my handwriting. And this is implementing an interface which interface name is action listener. So there is an interface called action listener and we are implementing that interface. So implementation, if it is the interface, we will draw a dotted line. So this is inheritance, this is implementation. So a dotted line versus hard line. We are putting some convention so that we can interpret this diagram easily. These are UML notations. Okay, we have seen two things. Now, according to these two things, can you tell me there is some event handling involved. We will come to the event handling code also. But out of this highlighted code, can you tell me what is observable in this entire piece of code? There is event handling involved. What is observable object in this? You have to identify the object, observable object. You guess. We are doing something on click of button. Our handler is running some code. What is observable in this entire thing? Yeah, BT and click me. So Shrividya says BT and click me is observable. Sushrita says window is observable. Sushrita, window is not observable. Are we doing something on the event of window? We are doing something when somebody clicks the button. So button is observable. So this guy is observable, right? On button, absolutely. So we are doing something on the button click. So button is an observable thing. Who is observer here in this in this entire scenario? Who is observer? Our handler. Yeah. So now I'll clarify one more thing here. See, when we say observer and observable, two things can come into picture. Two things that you talk about. One thing you can say is the class, another thing you can say the object, right? So we will uh, talk at both the levels. So ideally observable is a class, observer is also a class. So when you say observable is a class in our scenario, observable will become J button is observable. When we say observable is an object, you will say hey, BT and click me is that object which is observable. So class can also be observable, object can also be. So we can differentiate with both. Same way if I ask who is handler, so people who are saying our handler, that is correct. Our handler is a class which is actually the observer class. And any object of this class is also observer because handler object that we are creating of this class that is observer. And what is relationship between action listener and our handler? We will say our handler is a action listener because implements or extends this relationship or this relationship is always is a relationship. This is is a because we are inheriting, right? So keep that in mind. So we can say, yeah, handler is this handler object is observer. This handler class is observer. This J button is observable. This button click me is observable. So we are able to correlate things now. There is interface also into picture action listener that has come into action. Now observer pattern said one more thing. If you want to make this scenario observer observable, first restriction or first rule it had set for us was our observer must implement this interface. And since I said we will be writing observers, we have implemented that interface. Implementing an interface means whatever functions are there in interface, whatever declarations are there in interface, we must provide a body of those. In Java, action listener is an interface that I know. 
because we have referred i have referred to the documentation so i know which interface i should be implementing so that i can observe the button click event that is something we all must know how the classes have been written what guidelines have been set right so we have implemented that interface so we have kind of promoted ourselves or designated ourselves as we can be observer now the last question that remains is how do we connect observer and observable together observable is this object this object is observable this object handler object we have that we have is observer how we are connecting them this line is connecting them and connecting them is happening because the observer pattern had put a condition observer said anything which is observable must provide a function like add listener it should give an ability for anyone to subscribe to that event to say that i want to know about this event and it should take an object of that interface type and now you come back here you see button click me since it is observable it does provide a function add action listener which takes object of type interface any class which implements that interface there is a is a relationship we can class that class is object easily and this is the connection part once you have done this linking after that you are connected right this add thing that we are doing here this is just to add button onto the window this is separate this is not part of event handling right so this is to add button to the ui so is this clear to everyone how we have connected event handling and three pieces which are these perfect okay that is great so so now we understand things now overall thing that we have to do only thing that we have to do is we always have to write this function our main worry will be can we implement that interface write a function because that function will have access to do anything that we want to okay so this if this concept is clear we will do another small exercise where we will not implement the event of this button we will implement some other event so that we see have we understood this concept clearly and that is part of our mini pen application exercise similar to that exercise and that exercise was this that if i go back to mini pen there is a small piece in the mini pen that works and that small piece is c the moment i am moving my mouse you see coordinates updating at the bottom so when i am moving mouse the coordinates here at this section just pay attention to this section coordinates are mouse of mouse are being updated here the moment i am moving here the coordinates are updating this is what we want to kind of experience and try when i am moving this when i am moving it here this is not updated when i am moving on the window it is not updated when i am moving at this status bar it is not updated but when i am moving in this section it is being updated right so in this scenario tell me who is the observable what part of my window i will designate names to this part this is total window this is menu bar this is tool bar this is status bar and let me call this as drawing canvas so out of all these ui pieces window menu bar tool bar drawing surface and the status bar who is the observable here okay so harshini says canvas is the observable yes so we are observing canvas absolutely right because we are updating the event we are updating the coordinates only when mouse moves in this section so first thing we have clearly identified the source that we want for this scenario has to be this canvas if we want to update coordinates of mouse when we are in canvas and you will see that if i open microsoft paint here in paint also if you see at bottom there are coordinates being updated at this section if you focus on same feature is here also so this is using event handling and same thing we are trying to simulate in our paint also the so mini paint so we all are saying tamarin can you mute yourself we are hearing disturbance from your side thank you okay so in our scenario we are saying 
observable is so for mouse thing observable is you say drawing canvas is observable what kind of event we want to listen to what kind of event are we interested in is it click event that we are interested in or is there any other event that we are interested in interested in you are not taking action when somebody clicks other what is that other event can you give some name what best name we can think of giving it to them like okay position whose position whose position it is yeah movement position now, all that you are saying is is absolutely correlatable let's make it more clear yeah, it's position of the cursor and cursor is related to how the cursor moves how do we move the cursor on the screen if i have to move the cursor on my screen we will use mouse right because that is related to the mouse so people said position uh, movement yeah so ultimately what java people decide decided they did voting like you are doing they said okay there should be something as mouse motion listener they said let's define an interface whose name should be mouse motion listener because with mouse you can do clicks also with mouse you can do drag also so they decided to keep it mouse motion listener that becomes our interface name so this is an interface that that will be there in java so let me go and open this interface and see hey what function of this interface we need to implement if we are interested in that event so mouse motion java doc mouse motion listener java doc we open this this is an interface now the thing about interfaces is they will have function declarations they will not have their body that is what is about interfaces that's why it is abstraction right if i ask you what is a mobile phone you will draw an image it is something like this it will have a screen it will have some uh, camera here there will be a big screen here there will be some buttons here so whatever you draw here it is not actually a phone it is an abstraction of phone we can understand what the thing will be so interfaces are like same thing they give us a fair idea of what these things are so we see an interface this is there in java.aw2.event this is the interface name and when you come here it says method summary it has two methods and two methods are mouse dragged and mouse moved move is like if you are simply moving the mouse it is move then what is mouse drag what is the difference between move and drag can somebody tell what is the difference between moving the mouse and dragging the mouse you guys anybody and it is related to paint drag is moving by clicking yes vishnavi that is right in paint we will handle both kind of events see here if i am moving my mouse this is move but now now i am dragging so there is a difference between both of them both are related to mouse motion one is dragging another is moving and we can differentiate between these two right and we will be handling both the events move for this and drag for drawing right so right now the function that is of our interest is mouse moved it takes a parameter mouse event and that returns a void so this is the focus uh, for for this exercise right now right so let's go ahead with this for now okay so i need to implement an interface i need to create my handler for the next exercise so what i will do i'll simply go ahead close my previous application let's make a copy of new application sorry copy of previous application i'm making and i'll call it exercise 2 and main function will remain as it is so this is something i'll call as exercise 2 dot java yeah so we are creating a second class we are creating a window on window we are doing set size we are doing set visible true main functions purpose is to just create the window launch the window that's it now in window what we will do in window this time we do not want button let me remove all of this we want a simple window whose size should be 400 by 600 and but on window i want this time a j label and this label that we are putting btn label this label will show us the coordinates right so i'll say j label and initially i'll not put any text in that label 
so label created label is not observable label is not this so we have created one label for now and that label that we have added we are adding that to button and let me call it btn lvl uh, show coordinates or coordinates so this label will show us the coordinates this is our label this is our label now this should be easily understandable what this window code is doing whenever we create a window it creates a label with empty text and that label is added for now let me put some junk so that we can see the label is attached to the window for now there is no event handler let me remove that code so this much code that you are seeing on the screen we all are understanding right what this code will do Perfect. okay so let's go back and run this code now okay, somebody is unmuted yeah muted all so let's run this code java c being zero oop2 oop ex2 yeah, this is the class we are compiling now some compilation errors j label cannot find symbol so let me do java x dot swing dot star so that we are importing all the classes not one by one so this will import all the classes in this package let's compile now so j label is included now and we got this output sorry we got this compilation successful being zero oop2 ex2 and now if we run it you will observe there is a window on that window there is a label and this label is showing some random text for now now one thing we observed in past also this label is filling this entire window so ultimately this entire window has label we don't have any place for canvas right now so for now then it will become a challenge let's see if we can do that if i tell you let's say if i tell you window is also observable you can observe window also then first of all you will write your handler we want to write a handler which should print the coordinates of mouse pointer this is the handler we want to write and whatever understanding we have developed about this interface can you tell me how do i write my handler how do i write my observer what all do i need to do in order to implement an observer can you type in the chat window to guide me what should i do next i want to define a handler according to our understanding about our guidance how we should define a handler that is what this will tell you okay perfect so people are responding that i should be implementing this interface so let's copy this interface name let's come back to our code and let's say since we have to anyways implement that interface let me define a class i say my class i'm giving it a name randomly handler implements mouse motion listener and whenever we implement an interface what we must do all the functions which are there in the interface we should provide body of those functions i'm copying this function name putting that here and those functions we should make public so it will be public void and this function so ideally it is a mandate on me that if i want my class to be an handler for this event i must implement both the interfaces sorry both the functions in the interfaces which are mouse moved and mouse dragged so let me put this so we have implemented both the functions and we have given their body as blank which is acceptable we have created a handler now this handler should be attached to whom object of this class should be attached to whom so i need to create object of this handler class new handler this is capable of listening now but who is my event source here we know in window j label has filled entire window can i say j label can be treated as our do we have add mouse listener there is a function add mouse listener and mouse motion listener add mouse wheel listener so can i say for now let's treat label as our source we are not adding the drawing canvas we will come to drawing canvas when we go to paint for now i'm saying in our window entire window is filled by the label that 
is that understanding is coming from the last exercise we did our button filled the entire window so here i'm saying i'll make that as the event source and i'm adding handler to it so this is understandable whatever we have done perfect so so help me understand who is the source in our example now who is the event source or who is observable give me the object name not the class name ideally both we can say but give me the object which is observable in our scenario in this entire code label is observable what is the name we gave to the label yeah, i'm asking about object so it is lbl coordinates absolutely so that is the observable thing that is source who is handler give me handler object not the handler class who is the handler object absolutely that is h and how we have connected them we had an interface which was mandatory to be implemented by handler we have a function in the source class which allows us to add that handler object for listening that is observer pattern so now we have seen both these now that means when we run this exercise when we run this code now if i move my mouse on label then the coordinates of my mouse should appear and that code for coordinates to appear i should write in which function mouse dragged or mouse moved which function should be responsible for our moved absolutely so for now what i will do i will say rather than showing it on the label i will print i'll use system dot out print ln but i want to know what are the coordinates that is where this input parameters help this input parameter tells that i can give you more detail about the events where the mouse is this e would know let's see the documentation of this mouse event will have certain functions in it which will help us so this has functions like there is a function called get x there is a function called get y get x and get y are the function which are written into us into us we can use those functions that we will do so let's see so i will say e dot get x plus comma plus e dot get y and that's it we are done so who gave these x and y to us actually they were given by the x and y were given by the observable to us because that guy knew where the mouse is right now and using them we are putting them into console right so handler is ready right now it will not print in the ui but it will print on the console let's compile the code and try to see is it really working so okay i have to compile the code again because just now we completed our function compile again otherwise new code will not come into action run it again so now you see i'm moving my mouse and as i'm moving mouse it happens in so real time every time it gives me new coordinates right so this is the event handling if i move my mouse outside now handler sorry the source is not aware of the event happening the moment i enter and i start moving you see the coordinates get updated right so this is something that we should know about event handling so that's one any doubts folks on this is everything digestible awesome anybody any questions okay perfect so i believe everyone is clear with this now keep one more thing in mind if we have any event source if there is an event source can it have one observer or one handler or it can have more handlers will it allow us to add more handlers yes we can have any number of handlers that's the beauty of event handling one handler can do one type of thing another handler can do another kind of thing. now that is where we will get to because eventually our our goal should be in this exercise what we should be doing is when we are moving mouse one handler will print it on the console let it print on the console but i also want to update this labels text i also want to say that this label should also get updated right so that is what we want to achieve next 
and we want both the handlers to work in parallel now now you will see same concepts will get revised once again so if i want one more handler where should i write that handler shall i define one more class here by making a copy of this will that work can i call it console handler so this is putting on the console and here i'll also put this is coming from console handler this is coming from first handler now we have two handlers now if i compile my code and run my code will i say will i see both these lines on the output right away whatever i have written just now with this if i go and run my code once again will i see okay sirisha says no yeah sirisha so what is it that i am missing because of which both outputs will not come what additional thing i need to do what you are saying is right we will not see the output but what additional thing we should do we are missing one more yeah we have not created the object and we have not attached the new handler to this lvl coordinate now this lvl coordinate should have one more listener added add mouse motion listener can i directly define that object here new what is the name we give console handler console handler can i directly create the object and pass immediately will that work sirisha can you confirm earlier we were creating objects separately then we are passing here we are creating and passing at the same time but this should also work it cuts down the need of one more variable right so let's go and run our code and see is it really having two handlers now okay we are running you see the output first handler console handler both are listening at, at the same time so source is updating both of them that some event happened you can take your action okay so more than one handlers are also possible that is what we have validated now we want to upgrade our first handler to update the label so what it should do it should not display on the console it should display on the label where is label defined where is the label which we want to update where which class is it defined in it is defined as a data member of window class we would want to have access to that label here so that we can update the label right that is a problem because that label should have been available here also so one option is this label should be made public if i make this public then we can ideally somehow through some jugglery we can access that member and then we can update it but we want to avoid that we want to write this kind of code we want to avoid writing this kind of code but can you tell me which class already has access to label coordinates can i say window class already has access to label coordinates this label is already part of this window class right so i will do two things two possible solutions i have first solution that i have is this handler class who needs access to that label variable let me define this class inside the window class and say this is my this is a handler you can define class inside a class this is my ui handler now these kind of classes when you define a class inside another class there is a special name given to such class can you tell me what is the name given to a class defined inside another class has anybody heard this this is nested class and the purpose of nested class is if this class logic is written completely but this class needs access to the member of window class rather than defining this class outside you can define this class inside and once you have defined this class inside now what you can do is now this ui handler that you have along with console handler you can give another handler which is ui handler and this ui handler in free at free of cost it gets access to all the data members now we have this access so i can simply say this dot set text this has a function set text and i'll remove this so see the by making this class as nested class we have got an advantage this can access this member and that is what it wanted to do so this covers another concept of nested class now we have how many handlers total for button event sorry for move event how many handlers we have now 
see the highlighted part you have three handlers and all three will work in parallel so let's go and see okay i need to compile sorry if i don't compile the new code that we have written with inner class will not become executable so now you see all three handlers are updating right so this is again event handling taken to next level and reason i'm covering all this for you is many a times in books in uh, other people's project you will see any kind of handler written concept is same it is just that they are building on top of them gradually and there is a reason why people define inner classes and i hope we have covered that reason now let's summarize also that reason. So ideally, see these concepts I packed for today, I have moved them down so that they do not scare you in the beginning. So we have covered event handling. There is some documentation link also I have included that you can refer to later on, but you should get comfortable with them. So we have discussed event handling. We have talked about inner class. So what is the purpose of inner class? Can you tell me when we define inner class? Definition wise, it is a class defined, declared and defined. But why we will do that? Yes, we will do that so that we can access the class members of enclosing class. The class in which we are defining inner class. And in our scenario, you saw that use case came. We needed label access because we wanted to, this handler should have been updating that label. Right, so this is one scenario. Ideally, for now, we have written three handlers. One handler was this, another handler to show you that we can attach multiple. Third handler we have written so that we can update the label. Okay, so the nested class is done. There was one more option of accessing the label, and that alternative, that option was I'll, in fact, I will comment this for now, and I'll call it inner, inner UI handler, and I'll call it inner UI handler okay so so that different handlers we can later identify okay fourth i'm saying is any class which implements this interface can become the handler class do we all agree that any class which implements this interface can kind of say that i am a handler of this kind of event after that we can give that object in add mouse listener right if it can happen with any class then why not let me move it down so that things are much clearer yeah i have moved it down so if that is possible for any class then why not for window class we could have done same thing with the window class that we were having so this window class that we are having why not we say hey window class you become the listener you yourself become the listener why are we creating another class so if window class has to become the listener that means window class needs to give these two functions because anybody who implements the interface has to give body of these two functions so see what i did just now i am implementing this interface in window class and i'm giving both the things the window class function will anyways have access to its members so this cut down the need of inner class also right now this window class that we are having we should attach object of this as a listener and that is where we use the keyword this if i say this the current object becomes the listener and current object is of window class that means current functions can be called with that so this is making same class as listener and this is what is used widely when we will develop paint we will start whatever window class we have if we have to handle an event we'll implement the interfaces here itself and we can implement more than one interface also so we can say action listener more than one interfaces are also possible to be implemented so this is something we will use so keep in mind why i'm coming to this concept so when same class implements that interface you give functions here and then this is how you connect using this keyword you don't have to create a new object of this class you can use this keyword this always refers to the current object right so i have removed inner class handler i have brought current class handler let's go and run once again and let's go and run this now you see even now with this keyword our handler is the current window and current window handler is updating all this right so this is this concept now we have done one two three four kind of handler 
one more remaining, the last one, which covers the concept of anonymous class. Anonymous class says, you can define a class which implements this interface. Ideally, see, for handler class, we are creating one object and we are using it directly. It says if you are creating only one object of that class, you can do one thing. You can declare a class and create one object in single line. And this is beautiful concept. It makes the code very concise and it makes things pretty simple for us. And that concept is that will not require the need of making this. So what we will do is we will say LBL coordinates dot add mouse motion listener. And here we will say new. We are directly creating the object. We are not defining this class which implements this interface. Getting the idea, we are creating the object of a class which should have implemented this interface. So what we do, we do new with this keyword directly. And whatever logic we would have written in the class, whatever two functions we would have written in that class, those two functions can be written directly here. Yep, you see. So this benefit of using this approach is we do not even need to implement two functions. We do not even need to make this window class clumsy. We need it only one time. We can put the direct thing here. We can write everything here. Right, so this is the concept of anonymous class. I'll elaborate, I'll summarize once again. But you see, the thing is simple. Whatever you would have done earlier, you would have done implements interface, then you would have given two functions, you would have created a separate class, or you would have kind of made existing class implement this interface. In place of that, what we are saying is we can directly say new the interface that it would have implemented, put two round brackets, curly bracket. Inside this, this is the class body. We are just giving those two functions and you are done. So this one line is actually defining the class and creating the object in the same time at the same time. And we are not giving any name to this class. That is why this class is class is called anonymous class. And now this logic should also work. So five kinds of listener objects we have talked about and we will summarize all that. Even now, if you see the code works right and we will stick to using whenever we do things we will be when we come to the mini paint application that we will build we will use these two things more than anything else so let's summarize so we will stick to using uh, either window class implementing interface or defining anonymous class as handlers and reason we will do that is because we will have a lot of events that we would want to handle there is a drop down button also in our ui so mini paint if i come back to because a lot of event handling is involved we want to make our code concise see somebody will handle this event somebody will have handle this click event a lot of event handlers have to be written drag event move event then click event for every button. Since every button will have a click event, why define multiple classes? Why not put in the same line that we are doing? So we will directly say for any button, we will say button dot add action listener, they directly give the listener, put the code here. This will anyways access, have access to the entire code, entire class objects. In this class, whatever objects are there, whatever data members are there, all these handlers are also inner classes because we are defining it inside this, right? So let's put this also in summary that what anonymous class means is if we need to define a class which implements interface I, then we can have two options. First option is we will say class A implements i and then we will define this class right so i'm just giving you a skeleton if we had interface interface i which had a function void uh, test function if we are implementing that that class without anonymous class then we will have to give body of this function with public keyword public void test 
this is one way another way is this is explicit class way another way is anonymous class way in explicit class way we will do class and then we will say a is equal to new or we will say i handler is equal to new a this is what we would have done which requires defining a class and creating the handler second way is anonymous class way and that way is nothing but we will directly say i handler is equal to new and we will write the interface name to round brackets curly brackets and this body will come and sit over here now this thing in summary should be more clearer to you what is explicit class way and what is anonymous class way in explicit define the class then create the object in anonymous directly create the object with a new interface name round brackets curly bracket and inside this whatever body you would have written inside the class move back here so is it making sense everyone can you respond yes no anything requires clarification repetition i can do that for you if you require me to go over anything okay so two people have said things are clear okay any doubts any question it is clear awesome perfect that's good so and these links now you can read more about what is event handling i have given you the crux of it but if you still want more details about these concepts so these are official documentations of java from oracle so feel free to read them just to kind of uh, enforce this learning once again in your head that what we are doing i'll summarize whatever we have discussed in the class and that is what we had to cover for today right so with today we have understood more about event handling and that is what i planned as an agenda for today and today's agenda should be we should iterate over oops concepts once and in oh, i did not correlate sorry in today's oops concepts can i say we have talked about implements keyword again we have used in uh, interface we have used implements we have used right today these two keywords have been used when we were defining handlers abstract we have not used so far i'll come to that also when the need for that comes in inheritance today we have used extends right we have not used super keyword which is fine gradually we will come to that also encapsulation we did not pay attention to right now we are leaving that even now we will come to encapsulation also later we have done some sort of polymorphism it was a little and if i have to add that polymorphism says whenever you are overriding a function which is there on base class you can put an override keyword even if it is the function of interface here that you are overriding it's like you are giving a new definition of that i could have used the keyword override in our code also so we are implementing an interface function we can say override because we are given our own body this is where this function is an override what it tells is it tells it is not a new function of this class reason we are defining this function is it is there in interface and we want we have to override it same way every handler is actually overriding the interface function now this keyword is optional it is not mandatory so that's why we did not write it earlier but any class that is overriding a function can use this keyword so that we cover this keyword in anonymous class also you can put this keyword so i'm putting it everywhere and here we were implementing so this was in our class override override so it so it helps us see what this keyword is after this keyword compile the code it still compiles oh sorry i just ran it compile the code it still comp sorry yeah my history of this is screwed up here it still compiles it still runs so at the rate override keyword is kind of a helper keyword to us that we can use whenever we are overriding okay so coming back to any other thing that we missed so with four concepts we have covered some of them in today's section also we'll keep revisiting them in the end by, by the time we come to a state where we are implementing mini paint we will try to see like why we use the keyword what is the purpose and what is the real world application of it and these sessions we will also end up with the interview questions of oops concepts because when you face an interview a lot of people ask you the oops concepts and i have heard personally many interviews that i have taken 
I do not see candidates going beyond a point where you ask, can you explain this concept? They start with an example of, sir, there is a vehicle, vehicle will have a class, car, vehicle will have a truck. You ask them like, where in real world you will use inheritance polymorphism, they are clueless. They always keep running back to this example. And if we say, hey, leave that bookish example, can you give any other example? Then another standard example that I hear is animal. So animal is a class, cow, but cow, bull, and all are the subclasses of it. That is inheritance. And then they explain polymorphism also with this. So if I ask you the same question in chat window, can you put what other example will you give me? Leave this mini paint aside. If somebody asks you this question that give me example of inheritance, then how do you explain? What standard example do you pick to explain inheritance to anyone? Leave that vehicle and animal. Yeah, anyone? What answers you give? Okay, parents and children. Okay, let's call it human being, male, female. Okay. Yeah, Nilima has sent her answer. Okay, so I'll make sure by the end of these sessions on oops concept. Okay, versions of mobile phones. Yeah, mobile phone, then it Nokia phone, then it will have smartphone or basic phone, then you can have. Okay, so Shrika says college. Yeah, college, tier one college, tier two college, there will be subclasses. Great. So by the end of these sessions, uh, I would also want to make sure that when somebody asks you these concepts, you can also say that whatever projects you would have done in past, you should be able to correlate that to object oriented design. So ultimately, you should be able to tell, hey, in the project that I did, this is how I used inheritance. This is where I used polymorphism. You should be able to relate it to the software, not to the bookish example. So that is what I'll make sure that happens by the time we finish our OOP series. Right. Okay. So coming to the summary of yeah, human beings and mammals. Yeah, Janvi, that is also an example. So let's put a summary of whatever we have discussed today. So we started with oops concepts. We just listed them. Then we talked about uh, event handling concepts. So in event handling concepts, we talked about two things or three things, especially what all does event handling involve? What are the concepts that we should keep in our mind for event handling? event will have someone who will get to know the event has happened what term we use for that in event handling yeah source so we can call it source or we gave another name in terms of pattern observable yep then after source what is the next thing we should have observer yes which we call as handler which we say is observer and then the code that binds them together that code puts a criteria which says observer must implement an interface which is which is connector code yeah Lakshmi. so observer must implement an interface and observer must give a function that takes an observer must observable sorry observable must give a function that helps observer add itself to it right we use the function add mouse motion listener and all and we in context of this we also talked about a design pattern and that what was the design pattern name all these guidelines all these guidance is given by a design pattern that design pattern is called observer design pattern so observer design pattern says if you are designing a class which needs to be source then it should provide this function if you are designing a handler it must implement that interface so if you define your classes by following these guidelines you say this particular piece of code is like observer design pattern. so we talked about that then we talked about writing five types of handler can you give me a summary of five types of handlers that we have written first handler we wrote was a totally separate class Totally independent class with no access to data members of window. That is the first handler we wrote. Can you tell me what is the second type of handler we wrote? Yes, we wrote 
nested class so that it can access data members of window then we wrote third one third handler was anonymous class okay lakshmi says anonymous class although we had something in between independent class nested class ideally we wrote four not five sorry so that was same class which is having data members can implement the interface this is what we did right window class implemented that interface and it it actually became that class so let's see the five handlers that we have written first handler was external class second i had given name console handler so that is where i think the duplication came so this console handler is not a separate category ideally they both are same both are external right then we had written third handler we had written was the inner class the fourth handler that we had written was the same class acting as a handler and fifth class was anonymous class and we will stick to using the fifth notation quite often so you should get comfortable with the fifth notation or fourth notation not fifth yeah so this is second was used to independent handler to show two listeners in parallel so although we wrote five kind of listeners but they were category wise they were four categories because first two categories are exactly same they both were independent classes okay so that ends our discussion for today uh, next class will happen today is tuesday next will happen on thursday so we'll be meeting again on thursday and we'll take this journey forward to get closer to the mini paint application so do revise this whatever codes we have discussed just try writing them yourself you will click these links there you will find more sample codes just try running them so that these concepts are not only theoretical concepts to you you can understand things in real world applications also right any questions from anyone no okay then we are good for so much for attending this session yeah let's connect back on thursday once again